Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality. In today's video, we're going to go over converting a playwright test into a playwright test that uses the page object model principle. Now, I've already got the test set up, which all it's going to do is go to commitquality.com login, enter the username, enter the password, click the login button, and then assert that the logout text is on the screen. I know this works because I've just run it as well. It has actually just loaded on another screen, but it all passes as expected. And I'll I'll debug through this when we actually convert it to a page object model to show you the steps it's going through. A nice simple test that should show you how you can adopt the page object model in in your project. So the first thing I want to do then is I'm just going to create a folder called page object model. And inside that folder, I'm going to have a new folder and we'll name it sections because I'm going to talk about a basic page, but I'll also show what I do in my larger projects to split up pages by the distinct sections. So inside the page object model, let's create our C sharp class. And it's just a plain C sharp class for now. And I'll name this login page and hit enter. First thing I want to do is turn this internal accessor into a public accessor. If you don't know anything about these, I do have a C Sharp video which goes through all of these. So have a look at my C Sharp playlist and you'll be able to see what this is doing. And I'm going to create a property which is going to be the page that we are going to be passing through so we know what we want to interact with. So we'll say I page. I will say underscore page. The reason this isn't showing is this because this is because it comes from Playwright. So here we want to import the use in Playwright and we can get rid of all these as well. We're not going to need those. With the page there now, we're just going to create our constructor. So I'm going to say public, it should be capital L. Let's rename this so it doesn't get out of hand. So we're going to say public login page, pass through I page of page, and we're just going to set underscore page to equal page. So that's all going to be passed through fine. And we'll be able to interact with the browser that we are trying to work with. Now I want to create a bunch of locators. This is one of the main advantages of using a page object model. You can define a locator once and then it keeps your maintenance a lot easier. So Let's write one out and then we'll talk about it. So let's say uh, it can be private. It doesn't need to be public because everything's going to be accessed from inside this class. Say username and we'll say underscore page dot get by placeholder. Let's have a look. I believe the placeholder is just enter username. Yes, it is. So we'll say placeholder of enter username. And here we are, we've just defined our first locator. And the reason I do it here is say I had 10 tests that are accessing this username, this username property. Well, I'd have to define this in 10 different places. What happens if I decide to update my website to say enter name instead of username? That means you'd have to go to every file and update this string here for one tiny little change. But by putting this into your page object model, you're saying, okay, I've made everything a lot easier to understand where things are. Cause I know the login page should include all the login page locators. And I know if I do change this, I change it here and all the 10 tests that then reference this will all still work as expected because we've made that one tiny little change here. It just sticks to the concept of dry, which is do not repeat yourself. And all I'm going to do now is once you have the base of it kind of set up, you can kind of copy and paste. So I'm going to say the next thing I want is the password. And that's going to be enter password. And then we're going to want another one, which is the login button. So I'll say login button. And because we already had the test created, you can go to the test and you can just take what you want from it. So in this one, we'll say uh, get by test ID login button. So let's go back to the login page. And instead of get by placeholder, we'll say get by test ID login button. So that's the three elements we have to find now on this page. So that's all perfect. Now what I want to do is, because these are private, I want to access them via its own command inside the page object model. Now what you can do, you can put it inside this, this uh, login page class, or you could create another class, which is like a actions or commands 
file for each page but because this is so small i'm going to put everything inside here so i'm going to say public because we're going to want to access it in our test async task login and here to what we'll even add some parameters so i can say string username and string password even though it's all hard coded if you did want to enter different username and passwords we'll pass through these parameters which allow us in the test to choose what we want to enter into the username text box and the password text box so down here i can say await username which is username which is the locate that we've just created dot fill async and here we're going to pass through the string of username which we've called here we're going to do the same which i'm just going to do a nice copy and paste of password and don't forget if you copy and paste in, make sure you take the password coming through the parameter inside this method as well. And of course, you want to click the login button. So I'm going to say await login button dot click async. So that should do all of our login code for us. Now, if we just go through this manually a moment, I'll say username password of test and hit login. What happens? This takes us to the commit quality computers page. And just to keep this nice and easy, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a computers page where I'm not going to define all these elements because we've just shown you how to define the locators. But we are going to want to see this logout text. But this is technically its own section on the page. You've got this kind of nav bar header section here, and then you've got the actual body down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a section of nav bar. So that nav bar can be used anywhere. So look, if I'm on the add product page, that section could be added to this page. It could be added to practice and anything else so first of all let's create a empty page for this so i'm going to say copy login page here and we'll rename this to uh, computers page of course these need to change to computers page and the constructor will also need to change and i'm going to remove all the rest of the code. So this is just a basic setup. Like I said, I could add locators in here for the computers page, but that's out of scope for this video. Maybe something you could try. You could go onto the website and you can try to add your own page object model to add um, a computer, but that's off topic right now. I'm gonna leave this empty at the moment because the next thing I wanna do is I wanna create my section. So I'm actually gonna copy computers page because a section is essentially just another page object model class but we scoping it down a little bit. So what I'm gonna say is nav bar, and you could say section if you want, but I'm just gonna leave it as nav bar. We'll say no to that renaming, and we'll just name this nav bar, and rename this to nav bar. And then just like we did in the login page, I'm gonna have a locator. So I'll tell you what, I'll even copy this because it's so nice and easy to do. And here we want to get the log logout text. So I believe it was get by text. And I know it's a capital L for logout. Like I said, if you don't know, you can either go to your test you already have here, or you can just go to the page and have a look where you need. So many different ways you can do things, especially with Playwright on its kind of code generation tools as well. But now what I've got is I've got a login page, which contains all my locators. I've got a computers page, which I've just set up as a base for a moment, and I've got this nav bar section. And now what I can say then is, after I actually say logout, what I can do now is I can say, whatever page actually has a nav bar on it, I can add this section into. And it's super easy to do as well. So if I go back to computers page, because this is where we're going to use it, I'm just going to say public navbar. We'll name it what we want it to be named. So I'll say navbar and create a new instance of this, making sure we pass through the page. So new underscore underscore page. Perfect. And now all the locators we have inside navbar can be called upon inside this computers page. And we'll show you how to do that in a moment. And like I said, if you need to reuse this in all of them, you can literally copy this and I can put it into login page as well if I wanted to. Just showing you the benefit of having sections as well. Now, of course, you can scope them down. You could say inside here that you want to create a locator which is scoped just to the navbar section. But for now, I'm just keeping it as a plain section.
If you want more information on that, I can show you that. However, I don't want to complicate this too much. Awesome. So with that done, let's go into our test and let's create a page object model test. So tell you what, we'll keep this one there and we'll copy, rename it, and we'll say login page object model. That's going to be our page object model test. So this is going to stay fairly the same, but we're going to actually want to make use of those classes we've just created or those pages we've just created. So I'm going to say login page object model just to match the name we have here. I'll keep all this the same. And we're going to want to first declare the pages we want to use. So I'm going to say create a property of private login page. And that will be a that will just be login page. So we'll use the underscores as well to keep everything consistent with how we've been doing it. And then I also want to say we eventually are going to want to end up on the computers page. So we want to use that. So let's say computers page underscore computers page. Perfect. Now we want to set up, we want to create an instance of these classes because at the moment all we've done is define we want a login page and computers page. But to use those, we want to set it up. So I can use test initialize for this because I'm using MS test. If you use an end unit, instead of the attribute of test initialize, this would be set up. But obviously that's not going to work because I'm using MS test in this example. If you don't know about these kind of setups, go Go to my previous C Sharp and Playwright videos and they'll show you how to set everything up from scratch. So here I just want to create a new method. So I'll play public void. Um, I like to name it the same as what the attribute is. So I'll say test initialize. And here we just want to create an instance of the classes. So I'm going to say login page equals new login page of page. And I've got same for computers page equals new computers page. Perfect. So now we just need to convert this code then. I haven't actually added a go to method, which typically in each page you'd add a go to method to say where you want to go. So let's actually do that. Let's go to login page and let's say copy this method just because I'm being a bit lazy. Oh, we don't want it inside it, of course. So we want it here. And we'll say go to. We don't want any parameters for this unless you decide you do. And all I'm going to say is, where's that login command? Not that one. Make sure we've got the right one here. Let's just take that a moment. And we're going to say underscore page because that's what we've named here. Go to async. So that's just doing the go to command inside the actual page itself. And like I said, each page, typically, if you can go to it directly, should have one of these go-to statements just to keep it nice and neat. But that's obviously your choice. So what I'm going to do is make some space. We'll keep that there for a minute and we'll say await underscore login page dot go to. So that's going to take us there. Now we've got a method for these three, which if we look was called login. So I'm going to say is await underscore login page dot login. You remember we decided to pass the username and password as strings so we can say test and test very secure credentials there. And then we just want to assert that we're on this page. So we haven't added the assertion inside the computers page or inside the navbar section on the computers page. We've just added the locator. And the reason I've done that is because I'm not massively a fan of having assertions inside the page object model, because I think it takes away from the readability of the test. But that's a choice you can make with your team yourself. So all I'm going to say is get rid of this because we've done those. I'm going to keep the expect, but instead of this being page get by logout now, we'll say get computers page. We want to then get the section, which was called navbar. And then we want to get the logout. Why is logout not showing? Let's have a look. It's because it's private. So let's change that to public. Here we go. And now we should be able to access logout. There we are to be visible. So we've got the same test, but what we've done is we converted it into the page object model, which looks a lot neater. You understand what page you're, you're on straight away. 
And now the maintenance wise, if I had loads of different things logging in, loads of different things checking log out, you've got them in one nice and easy place. And let's just run this test to make sure that we don't finish off the video with some kind of error or failure. Here we've got login page object model. Let's run this. It's probably going to be very quick. It was very quick. You can see it passed, but I'm going to actually add some breakpoints. So I'll add a breakpoint here and a breakpoint here, just so I can actually show you. I'll run it in debug mode just to show you it is working as expected. So there we are. It stopped there on login page, so it's gone to login. If I continue, it's going to do the login for us. So that's logged in. We can tell that because the logout button is visible and we're on the computer's page here as well. So if I continue through, all working as expected. And that's how you can convert your playwright tests to use the page object model pattern. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. I have also enabled super thanks. So if you do want to help contribute to these videos and my, the running of my website, you can do that as well. As always, thank you for watching and have a good day.